subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on our updates and get notified about our new videos. So let me give you an example of what we are doing in Equifax. So what you need to say is that in Equifax we have a lot of fun, okay, playing with the data. A data scientist is a funny guy, okay, a creative guy, and we spend a lot of time to try to identify what we can do with the data. So this is the funny part of the, the thing. So I'm coming back to the digital footprint, uh, my uh, personal life, uh, physical life and my digital life, the way that I am someone uh, at home and the way that I am someone in uh, Twitter. No? And so, a uh, few years ago, so it's the first uh, usage of the big data that we've done uh, in Equifax. Uh, it was four years ago. So, uh, we asked Twitter to give us, so we pay for that, uh, four billion of tweets. Okay, so just give me a very, very uh, small sample of tweet that you have. So we got the tweet. Uh, uh, it's 10 million uh, US profiles. So you uh, twist, uh, tweet pro Twitter uh, generated by uh, 10 million digital profile. Okay, and on the other side in Equifax we have a lot of data set da da databases. So we have in the US all the physical person uh, that access to credits or that have access to credit in the history. So this is 200 or three, uh, 300 million uh, consumer profile. So we match those two things. So doing that in mathematics, it's really hard. Or it looks hard. Uh, you can do that with machine learning. You can do that if you can access to uh, voice recognition, uh, and you have a, a database of references, uh, photos, for example, if you have uh, the, all the passport of the US citizen, and on the other side, you can get uh, you know, a photo of someone who is uh, posting a tweet, uh, you can match the two things now. Uh, but you need the consent of the people to do that. So what we did, uh, actually, I will come back to this slide at the end, uh, but uh, so what we did, the first thing we did is that four billion uh, tweets, we look at uh, using text analytics, very simple algorithm, we uh, tried to identify people who want to buy a car. Okay, and so we classify the tweets saying, they are not speaking about car here, or yes, the guy is saying, he's saying car shopping, so you know, I'm pretty sure that the, probab the probability that this guy will buy a car in the next a few months is very really high. Uh, so we try to classify that, uh, and uh, it was the easy part of the process. Now it's very really simple to classify uh, using algorithm uh, based on you know uh, unstructured data. After that, this is the way we link people. So you will see it looks uh, very simple. It's not it's not as simple as it looks, but. So uh, when you have a tweet, you have some information, header information on the tweets. So you know the name, the nickname, you know the first name and the last name. That's cool. So this guy, uh, it's called uh, Brandy Lawrence, and you know that the guy uh, lives in Portland, Oregon, in US. So as we have a database, a, a reference, a consumer profile, okay, with ID identificators, which is a unique ID here, we try to, so we look at all the uh, Brandy Lawrence uh, who live in Portland, actually, and we said, okay, let's match and let's see what happened. So uh, in US, we have only 77 uh, Brandy Lawrence, okay? And people who live in Portland, it's only three people. So we're almost there. Uh, we were able to link a tweet with three different physical people. So what we have from uh, Twitter, it's historical data. So when I say, Historical data could be garbage. Depending on what you want to do, historical data could be uh, very important, no? especially on credit behavior. Uh, looking at historic, uh, historical payments uh, can explain a lot uh, the way people will uh, pay their, pay their uh, credit uh, in the future. So we look at historical data, and it was a huge one because uh, it's not easy to get its information, but we uh, found out that this Lawrence Brandy 
used to live in Florida. And so by chance, uh, we were, there is just one Lawrence Bundy in the United States who is living today in Portland and who lived in Florida in the past. So we match the two things. For what? So coming back to the slide, uh, it was a, you know, in this case, the customer is uh, Ford, okay? So a car, uh, so his business is selling car. And he said, help me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm spending too much money, a uh, lot of money uh, in my marketing. I don't know who will buy car, so I just want to send information uh, to send my uh, marketing uh, activity to people uh, who really want to buy car and propose some promotion here or whatever, no? And so, uh, as I said, we were able to match part of this database. We were able to classify, uh, we'll say, car buying appetence or propensity to buy a car based on text analytics, uh, uh, you know, on this, uh, on this tweet. And as we were able to link them, so what happened is that Ford, uh, they sent some promotion to those guys and said, if you come to see the new version of this car, okay, I will get you uh, a good promotion, a good price for the car. And so uh, the way we look at that, the result of that, uh, is that uh, looking at this population, the, guy, the guys who, who we think they want to buy a car, at the end, at the end of the day, uh, their uh, positive response were, was four times uh, higher than you know, uh, someone who uh, is not part of this, uh, th this, uh, this file. So what I'm giving you this example, because at the end of the day, the math behind that is, is very easy. You know? It's not uh, rocket science. We didn't use uh, deep learning or whatever. We just look at the data one more time, clean the data, uh, link the data, and uh, looking at one business uh, purpose, which is, uh, OK, I want to sell more car. I want to sell car in a very efficient way. And the most important thing is making sure that you can look at the results. So the feedback is very important. Okay? Where we can't have feedback, we need to stop to do AI. Because AI needs feedbacks to be able to work well and improve. So in some cases, we are using AI without feedback. So we are selecting people. In the US, they are selecting people based on a range of information, students, to access to some universities. And uh, they are using some data. And, but we don't know what happened at the end of the day because they are selecting the students. So of course, the students, they have uh, very good results. But what happened with those guys? We said no. Okay. We said no. Perhaps they uh, will have been successful in their studies. So how do you make sure that, in this case, we have the feedback loop because uh, we have the people we choose and we have the people we don't choose. And we know exactly how they work. So feedback is something really important. And that's it. It took us like uh, three months to do that. It was the first uh, use case that uh, we built in the US. So now we are doing similar things in, uh, in Bangalore and in Mumbai. Hey, thanks for watching. Do like the video, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Check out exclusive coupon codes for our YouTube learners in the description and visit moneypalprolearn.com to redeem it.